Hello everyone, this is Reza. Welcome to another video of FX series in Maya. In this video, we are going to pick up where we left off in the previous video and we will finalize our fire simulation. The focus of this video will be on a particle system. Now, as you can see, here's the result. I've gone ahead and rendered 175 frames and everything is ready to go for the secondary layer, the floating particles on top of our fire. Now, I can easily select the fluid simulation. I can either disable the evaluation to deactivate the fluid container or I can just go to NCache, delete its cache and hide the container. Now, I am going to select the logs and make sure I'm in effects menu set. I'm going to go to end particle and I'm going to emit from object using legacy particles. The reason I'm choosing legacy particles over an N particle, if you've been following my effects series, you know that N particle comes with nucleus node and nucleus node has an internal gravity node. We don't need that gravity node, already have a gravity that we can use in our scene. So for that reason, I'm just gonna go and emit from an object using legacy particles. The emitter type obviously needs to be a surface. And I can just call this flying particle emitter. Everything else we can change in the attribute editor and I go create. Now if I click, you can see we've got some floating particles. First things first, with the emitter selected, I go to basic emitter attribute and increase its rate to 300. So we get more particles. Now the thing is they don't have any directionality we have two ways of doing this. We can give it a direction through a brand new force field such as drag, gravity, or even air, which is rather subtle, or we can actually connect this to the gravity node that we already have. But before I do that, there is uh, one problem here, and the problem is these guys already have velocity. So you can see without any force field, particles move in different directions. You may ask, well, we don't have any gravity. This legacy particle system does not have any internal gravity or wind force. So how on earth they move? The reason that they move, if I go to particle shape node, the reason is this attribute conserve. And this attribute creates default velocity and injects it to each particle. Now, if I set that to zero, all of a sudden we cut the energy and every particle stays put. Now, this enables us to give this particle object a direction without getting too distracted with uh, the default direction, which is an omni-like direction. We don't need that. Okay, that's good. We're certainly making progress. Now, this particle system is available to us. Now we can give this a direction. The way that we do that is through the already established gravity node in the previous video. So I'm going to select the particle and I'm going to go to Windows, Relationship Editor and Dynamic Relationship. You can see we can plug this particle to our gravity. And if I do that and play, you can see now these guys have directions. But what I want to do really is not only I want them to follow this gravity, but also I want this particle to follow the direction of my fluid simulation as well. So I'm going to bring back my fluid simulation, pressing hatch. I'm going to reduce 
the resolution to something like 50 and I'm going to assign this particle to my fluid simulation as well. Now they are going to follow the direction of the gravity and fluid simulation. To help the situation I'm going to go to gravity and give these guys a little bit of push in positive y direction as well. Now I'm going to hide the fluid container again and just play the particle system. This is great. Again, we have the same problem we had with the fluid. The particles are emitting from the entire object. We can use the same trick to customize the emission map for the particle system. So if you select the particle and go to particle shape, well actually that attribute is inside the emitter and you go all the way down to texture emission attribute. Now you can actually assign a texture to your emitter and customize your emission map. So I'm going to bring the hypershade, I'm going to go to textures and I'm going to use this mask blur that I used in the previous session. So I'm going to select the emitter here, select my mask blur, middle mouse, drag and drop in here. It is important to use the already created node, not to create a brand new node. Now that's great. I'm just going to close the hypershade. Now by default, a connecting or attaching a texture to this attribute is not going to do the trick. You always have to go enable texture setting rate to apply that texture to this attribute. Now while I have this attribute here, I'm going to go to particle shape node and change the lifespan as well. I noticed that these particles live forever, which is very unrealistic. You can create a random expression. There are so many ways to do this. You can actually create an opacity per particle attribute here and assign a ramp to it. Just for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to go and create a random range set that lifespan to something like 1.5 or maybe 2, we'll see, and give it a little bit of randomness, one second. So the particles may die one second before and after this value. So I'm going to rewind and play and we can see we have a much better result. I'm actually quite loving this. I'm going to go and probably to make it more realistic, I'm going to just assign streak. To change the attribute, I'm going to click on current render type and set the line width to 2. Also, I am going to select my particle system and to make the behavior look even more interesting, I'm going to go to field solver and add a turbulence node just going to reset its settings. I'm going to set the magnitude to 10. As always, we don't want to have any attenuation. I can even lower the frequency to have a much more interesting result. And while there is no phase or direction, I can give phase Z minus one. Now create. Now let's see what we're getting can see the movement is much more erratic and unpredictable. That's great. I'm actually quite love that time to call it a day. If it was um, an end particle, you could have end cached it. But because it's just a normal legacy particle simulation, simulation, you can bake the animation. But to be honest with you, the simulation is fairly straightforward and simple. So no need to do any of these. And I'm going to go to my render setup. I'm probably going to create another layer called this one particle. Create a collection and put my particle system 
into that collection, I'm going to call this particle col. Of course, it's always a good idea to create another collection. I'm going to call this environment light. Select the dome light and add my lights in here with the filter set to lights. While I have this, I can actually select the geometry and add that to a layer. And of course, I need a collection and add the geometry to a separate layer. So you can actually see either the master scene or you can see the fluid. If I just bring the fluid back, you can select between the fluid or the particles or the geometry itself. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to render 175 frames on each layer, bring those layers into a compositing application and put the whole thing back together. And I'll see you in the next chapter. All right. Um, we're in Nuke. You can use After Effects or any compositing application packages. It is fairly straightforward. There is not much to it. I'm going to walk you through what I did. But again, based on your topic, you may change a few nodes. Starting with my fluid simulation. So I have both renders merged together with screen and that creates some sort of a um, halo or glow adds that to the scene. I color corrected the scene and add a little bit of glow. So if I click on color correct and view it, you can see with or without color correction. I introduced a little bit of red. I increased the contrast just a tad and add the added a little bit of gain to the master slider. Then I added a little bit of glow to the fire as well. So without and with, you can see it's very, very subtle. I can actually zoom in and then channel that to the background that I have. I color corrected the background as well. So if I zoom in, you can see I added a little bit of color correction to kind of simulate the heat without with color correction and then I added fire on the top and you can see having that color correction on the geometry does help to blend with the actual fire. Now then as for the particles I did the same thing merge them with the screen and added a glow. Now this glow is a little bit too much so I color corrected that. Now if I click on color correct, you can see again, I introduced a little bit of red in it. I reduced gamma. So those particles are not just too bright. And of course, to blend everything together, I blurred them a little bit. So I'm just going to probably blur something like 3.5, 3.1 would be a much better number. And then through merge, I merged them back into this scene added this color correction just to kill some of these white points. I felt like the smoke is a bit too white. So I used color correct node to fix that and wrote the entire sequence. You can write it as uh, an image sequence, bring it to an editing application and continue with your project. Or you can just write it out as a video file if your project requires to. And that's pretty much it. And let's have a look at the result. And this is the final result. That's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this two part video. And thank you very much for tuning in. See you guys in the next video.